Hey everyone, this is Adam Bergman, founder and CEO of Iry Financial. Welcome to another episode of Ad Bits, where I will be sharing bits of knowledge about self-directed retirement. If you want to learn more, you can subscribe to our YouTube channel and follow us on social media. Just search IRA Financial. Hey everyone and welcome to another episode of Ad Bits. Today we're talking about who can set up a Roth IRA. So setting up a Roth IRA, funding a Roth IRA, kind of like doing a traditional IRA, except there's a couple wrinkles that you need to know about. So a Roth IRA, unlike a traditional IRA, is an after-tax account, meaning you do not get a tax deduction for making contributions to a Roth IRA. It comes from after-tax money. Whereas a pre-tax IRA, a traditional IRA, you can get a tax deduction for the amount you contribute to an IRA. The maximum for 2020 or 2021 is $6,000 or $7,000 if you're over the age of 50. Now, just like a traditional IRA, in order to make contributions to a Roth, you got to satisfy essentially two requirements. Number one, you have to have some earned income. And earned income essentially means compensation for services, commissions. What does not count as earned income is investment income like interest, dividends, royalties, rental income, passively, capital gains, or Social Security, things like that. So you have to actually earn the compensation. Now, you have the option, if you're married, to piggyback off a spouse. So that means that if you do not work or you're retired and your spouse does, and your spouse, let's say, makes 50000 bucks, you can take or borrow some of her earnings and use that as a source of funding. So if you had zero earned income, but your husband has 50000 or your wife has 50000 you can still make contributions of six or seven thousand dollars, so so long as you wish. So we need when first step is you need to have earned income, okay? But with a traditional IRA, there's no maximum on how much earned income you can have to make pre-tax IRA contributions. So you could earn fifty grand, two hundred grand, or ten million dollars. It doesn't matter. The only limitation is is if you have access to a four hundred one k at work, even if you don't contribute. In the case of a pre-tax IRA you are limited on how much you can contribute to the IRA because there's a deductibility issue. In other words, the IRS does not want you having the capacity to deduct too much on your tax return. But with a Roth, there's no such worries deduction. Why? Because Roth, after tax account, there are no tax deductions. So the government's less concerned about deductibility. However, there is a income threshold, a maximum income that if you surpass you're not allowed to do a Roth IRA. But with almost everything tax-related, there's always exceptions. That's why tax lawyers are still working. That's why we're in business. That's why we go to law school. That's why I did an extra year of master's in taxation. It's because it's tricky. So let's start with the basics. We know you have earned income, number one. Number two, if you're single and you earn less than 125,000 bucks, Okay, we're basically anywhere from under 125, you can do Roth if you're single. If you're married and filed jointly and you make under 198, no problem. You can do Roths, okay? However, once you start earning more than 125 filing single, meaning you go from 126 to 140, you're going to be limited on how much you can contribute. And once you're over 140, if you're single filer, you can't do a Roth IRA. But just let me hold that thought for a second. When I say can't, there's an exception. Married file jointly, same rules. If you make under 198, you're good. Over 198, if you go from 198 to 208, you have limitations on what you can put into a Roth. Once you're over 208,000 married file jointly in 2021, no Roth IRA contributions. Okay? So how does that work? <laughs> so... When I say exceptions, there's something called a backdoor Roth IRA. So the way the backdoor Roth IRA works is that 
you can make a after-tax IRA contribution. So like a traditional IRA, except you just don't get a tax deduction because you're considering it after tax. And then you just convert it to Roth. Sounds too easy, right? Sounds like, wait, that is something the IRS, if they wanted to stop, would stop. And they did stop it prior to 2010. Prior to 2010, there was actual income limitations for Roth conversions. So you couldn't do Roth conversions if you earned too much money. But they stripped that rule because of the financial crisis. The government was interested in generating revenues from Roth conversions. Why? Because when you do a Roth conversion, you pay tax on the fair market value of what you convert. So at that point, the government was in need of revenues. Taxes is a big source of revenues for government. And they opened the floodgates and said, okay, you know what? You want to do a Roth conversion? No problem. We'll let you do it. In fact, we'll encourage you to do it because you can pay the tax over two years, which was the law back in 2010, 2011. So now the rule is there's no limitations for Roth conversions. Anyone can do a Roth conversion, even if you're Jeff Bezos or Warren Buffett, you can do a Roth conversion. Just send us your tax revenue. And if you're interested in Roth conversions, you can check out done a bunch of podcasts, videos, and blogs on that topic and go through some of the details and reasons why you would or why you wouldn't do it and some of the elements you need to think about before doing so. But now that there's no income limitations for Roth conversions, the whole idea of backdoor Roth IRA strategy just opened up. So what that means is, let's say you make 250,000 file married, file jointly. What that means is you can put six or seven thousand dollars if you're over 50 in a IRA. It's just not pre-tax. So you just don't take a deduction on it, dump it in, and then you open a Roth IRA and immediately convert it. Now, what you've done is in terms of from an IRS's perspective, they're not as concerned because you didn't get a deduction for that six or seven thousand dollars. So you're not in the traditional IRA bucket and it's after tax. So they're not losing any tax revenue. And since 2010, when they got rid of the income limitations for conversions, they're basically allowing you to move it into a Roth. Now, it doesn't matter if you have access to a 401k or not, just in the case of a pre-tax IRA, because again, we don't have a deductibility issue. IRS is not worried about you taking too many deductions. So one other thing to keep in mind, if you are going to do backdoor Roths, which I actually do uh, every year, the other thing to remember is if you have other pre-tax IRA accounts, you need to aggregate all those accounts when doing that conversion. So what do I mean? Let's say you have 5,000 bucks in a traditional IRA you've had, you've had open for 10 years. You know, it's sitting at a bank, it's invested in the S&P, it's just there. And now you wanna do a backdoor Roth IRA conversion of 5,000 today, okay? So you think you're just able to dump the 5,000, open an account at IRA Financial Trust, and then convert it to Roth, and now you have $5,000 Roth. The rules are a little different. It says that you need to aggregate all your traditional IRA. So now you take the 5,000 traditional IRA you're going to put in today in the backdoor Roth and the $5,000 you had 10 years ago. So now you have $10,000 and you want to convert five, basically only 50% of what you're converting. So 2,500 out of the 500 will be Roth. The other 2,500 stays after tax and you got to do it for a year after year after year until you actually get all that money into Roth. Now, yeah, you can convert all 10 at once, but you're gonna pay tax on the previous five from 10 years ago because that was in pre-tax. So you'd pay income tax on that $5,000. You can do so, that will allow you to get the $5,000 from today in that backdoor to Roth. If you don't care about doing that, you don't wanna pay any additional tax, then you do it over years, slowly and surely, you'll eventually get all your traditional IRAs to Roth. So just one thing to keep in mind, I know like myself, I got tons of IRAs all over the place from like a bunch of former law firms I used to work at and just random IRAs I set up. Um, So every time I do the backdoor Roth IRA, I kind of keep that in mind. And what I'm actually going to do at some point is just convert it all over. I just, I just kind of a pain. I just haven't got around to doing it, but uh, that's something I'm going to do. So again, just keep that in mind. If you have other traditional IRAs out there, and you want to do a backdoor Roth IRA, you got to aggregate all your IRAs together and then do the conversion. And then a percentage of what you're doing as a backdoor Roth IRA will move to Roth and the other percentage will stay in the traditional IRA world. And you'll have to wait till the next year and subsequent years thereafter to 
move everything to Roth. So that's really it. The main difference, obviously, between a Roth and a traditional IRA is it's after tax. There's no tax deduction. Other things, there's no requirement of distributions once you hit 72. Um, you can still make Roth IRA contributions as long as you have earned income until you die. Um, traditional IRA has RMDs at 72. Um, the SECURE Act actually got rid of the old rule, which, which used to say that if you were over 70 and a half, you cannot do pre-tax IRA contributions. That stopped. So now you can do pre-tax IRA contributions as long as you have earned income for, forever. Um, but there are RMDs, Roth has no RMDs, but there is an income threshold of that 140 or the 208. Um, so just keep that in mind. And then the back door, remember, if you have other IRAs in there from previous years, you may not be able to dump all your current after tax to Roth in the current backdoor Roth conversion process into Roth because there's a pro rata formula. So, and the other thing to remember is Roth contributions are after tax. So you can always pull them out anytime you want. But if you want to reap tax-free, interest-free benefits on all your earnings, you got to be over 59 and a half and the Roth has to be open at least five years. So that's an and rule. 59 and a half and five years. Once you satisfy those two requirements, you can pull everything out tax-free. But contributions could be pulled out at any time without uh, tax or penalty. It's just the earnings, which obviously... The earnings is all the juice, right? That's the alpha. That's where you, you have most of your um, value is in the earnings from the contribution. So just be aware of that. If you have an interest in learning more about setting up an IRA or who can set it up, check out uh, an AdBits podcast I, I recently did on that. You can also check out you know, various blogs, podcasts, and um, YouTube videos I've done on, on uh, pre-tax IRAs as well. So um, just like a pre-tax IRA, you can self-direct the Roth. You can do traditional as well as alternative asset investments. Um, I'm a big Roth guy. I, I wrote a book specifically on Roth uh, and God we trust and Roth we prosper. Um, so uh, if you're interested in Roth, you can always check that out. Um, but again, the whole idea of Roth is you just lock in tax-free gains. If you're doing high high reward investments like Bitcoin or SPACs or private equity, um, carried interest, stuff like that. It's, it's kind of nice to have a Roth because you can lock in your tax-free gain. So there you have it. That is the rules and requirements for who can set up a Roth IRA and, and kind, of, kind of the sum, some of the requirements involved. Um, I, I hope you uh, found this interesting, at least um, insightful and, and helpful. Um, and again, if you, if you make a million dollars a year, you still potentially can do a Roth. So don't get scared away when people tell you, you make too much, you can't do a Roth. Remember what I'm talking about back to a Roth conversion strategies. Just remember that you have to aggregate. If you have other traditional IRAs out there, you may not be able to move it all to back door. So stay safe, stay healthy. Thanks again for listening, for watching on YouTube. Subscribe if you haven't. Uh, don't forget to check out ad mail and also Adam Talks, two other weekly podcasts I do. Um, and again, thanks for uh, all your support. Um, you guys are awesome. And talk to everyone again next week. Mm -hmm.